Hello and welcome to another episode of How Like Maths, which is all about how maths is used in real life. My name is Nahid. I'm the host of the show. I'm also a applied mathematician. I did a PhD in it. I'm also the founder of Bungie Pi, which helps children learn maths using storytelling, animations, and real life applications. Higher Like Maths is my own initiative to introduce you to great minds in the space of maths and its applications. Today I have a great speaker who is also an old friend of mine, Dr. Puyan Jamshidi. Puyan is an assistant professor in computer science and engineering at the University of South Carolina and visiting researcher at Google. He is the director of Artificial Intelligence and Systems Lab where he and his students and postdocs design novel artificial intelligence and machine learning algorithms and investigate their theoretical guarantees. He is also interested in applying machine learning and AI algorithms in high impact applications, including robotics, computer science, healthcare, neuroscience, space exploration, engineering, and science. Recently, he was awarded $1.2 million from National Science Foundations for his breakthrough ideas in artificial intelligence. Prior to his current position, Puyan was a research associate at Carnegie Mellon University, US, and Imperial College London, UK. He received a PhD in computer science, a master's degree in system engineering, and a bachelor in applied mathematics. In this episode, he will talk about the mathematical foundations required for building up a career in artificial intelligence space. This is quite an interesting topic um, for a lot of people because AI is getting very interesting and taking over. So you might like to know why you should learn math to be able to build up a career in this space if you're interested in it. Anyway, that's one of my favorite topics, by the way, and quite an interesting one. Before listening to our conversation, please don't forget to subscribe to our platforms and support us to continue this great work. We hear every single day uh, machine learning and data analysis and, and things like that, right? AI. So um, right. I think this just they, this sounds so familiar these days because we hear them so many times. But I think uh, we like someone like you to um, kind of explain it in a very, very simple way. What is this uh, machine learning? What is this data analysis? 100% sure there are so many fantastic people that they can explain <laughs> what they're learning a lot better than me, uh, but I will try. Um, yeah, no, so um, uh, basically uh, AI is a discipline uh, which, uh, a part of this discipline is called machine learning. Mm -hmm. So AI contains like search, contains uh, a lot of things like including optimization, mm -hmm. uh, including uh, like different uh, uh, different even subfields uh, like uh, for example how to search in adversarial environments, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, where it may not necessarily involve uh, learning. Mm. Machine learning actually uh, is uh, is a new uh, subset of AI, mm. which deals with algorithms uh, that learn uh, by um, either from data mm. or uh, by doing something in the environment where they are placed in. Mm -hmm. um, so, for example, we have different paradigm in machine learning. Um, the most popular paradigm uh, is supervised, it's called supervised machine learning, uh, mm -hmm. where it involves uh, some labeled data. Um, so, uh, data is a major part of uh, machine learning or supervised machine learning, where consists of, for example, uh, a scene um, and uh, a label which explain what is inside the scene. Mm -hmm. Typically, um, it's even more limited when uh, you have a data point when it consists of a scene. Typically, 
you see a, a, a small box mm -hmm. uh, located on a very small part of the scene, like yeah. for example, located on the head of a bird, mm -hmm. uh, and the label uh, says that bird. Mm -hmm. And like, what is inside this scene? So, um, and there are different algorithms um, and mechanisms to learn from this supervised data. Mm -hmm. um, for example, these days, uh, neural networks are, uh, which has been around for uh, many years, actually since 1950, uh, but they became uh, popular after the rise of big data um, because they, they learn this pattern from like massive amount of data through a network of uh, neurons, which somehow emulate uh, what we have in our brain. Besides uh, supervised machine learning, there are uh, two other paradigms. Uh, another one, which again became popular these days, actually, uh, is called self-supervised or unsupervised learning, mm -hmm. where instead of uh, showing or having a label data, you have some data which are not labeled. Um, like for example, you might have a video stream and you show this video stream uh, part of it uh, to the algorithm and uh, it should predict what would have been, what would be the next scene, for example, mm -hmm. uh, in the uh, in the following, in, in like for example, let's say a few seconds after this episode of uh, of a uh, you know movie, mm. um, and the most actually fascinating uh, paradigm in machine learning is called uh, reinforcement learning. Uh, this is uh, the paradigm that typically is used for training something like robots, mm -hmm. um, and this is essentially a totally different paradigm from the first two paradigms, supervised and unsupervised, mm -hmm. because here in reinforcement learning, we have an agent. Um, so this agent could be uh, like uh, not even, you know, a physical agent, uh, could be robot, could be even a simulated agent in our computer, mm -hmm. but it is embedded in an environment, mm -hmm. meaning that it needs to take an action Mm -hmm. And taking this action, for example, moving the box, right? Uh, obviously, change the state of the environment. Mm -hmm. And this environment uh, sends a reward back to the agent. And through this interaction, taking an action and getting some reward, mm -hmm. um, the agent learns uh, some policy. Mm -hmm. And the policy um, basically is a very simple concept which says that given a, a state of the environment, what is the best action uh, that agent can do to mm -hmm. maximize the reward? And this is uh, basically, uh, this idea also came from like uh, neuroscience mm -hmm. uh, where uh, like, uh, like for example, similar it's very similar to the way that, for example, let's say if you have a dog, if you want to train the dog, mm -hmm. uh, you know, wants to train the dog to do something, mm -hmm. uh, you show it, and then once the dog uh, does it correctly, you give it a little bit of reward, like mm -hmm. a tasty, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, treat. Uh, otherwise, you don't. And mm -hmm. through this uh, uh, interaction, uh, uh, learning of like uh, some skill uh, by the dog can happen very similar thing has been adopted uh, in, in reinforcement learning. Mm -hmm. But in reinforcement learning, computer science, there are obviously like uh, some found some mathematical foundation of mm -hmm. uh, reinforcement learning, which um, uh, like some part of it may not needed uh, in neuroscience, for example. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this neuroscience thing is so fascinating. I, I love that so much. And um, right. I, I've always kind of liked to find someone who is who is able to kind of bridge between maths and AI 
a new science as well. So if, if you think you can give us like a, a lecture talk, something. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not an expert in neuroscience. <laughs> I wish I was. Right, I wish yeah, I was. Yeah. It's so fascinating. Yeah, I mean, I read article. What mm. that's it? I I have I mean, zero expertise in neuroscience. Oh, uh, well, I but uh, like, uh, but I know that like some idea. Yeah. in uh, like uh, computing especially in ai machine learning um the root of it is uh, neuroscience, neuroscience. Right? it's not motivated yeah. uh and research uh, from neuroscience mm. but now actually uh like the uh the other way uh at least uh, what what i've heard from some research is saying mm. that um what ai now gives to neuroscience become higher than what neuroscience gave to AI, uh, because also yeah. neuroscientists use a lot of algorithms in AI, yeah. uh, because for example, it is very difficult to understand human brain. It's right. very difficult to run experiment in actual brain. Yeah. We know that we cannot. <laughs> uh, and and uh, and what we can do, like construct simulated brain, like yeah. AI agent, yeah. and look at uh, look at it uh, and investigate some for example you might have some hypothesis how yeah. memory works uh for example uh and and the study to uh you know uh these ai agents uh yeah. how, how a deep neural network learns yeah. how these other structures shape mm. in, in mm. artificial neural network yeah. And how neuroscientists could maybe build some theory based on these wow. uh, empirical uh, experiments in, you know, artificial neural network yeah. instead of yeah. human neural network. That's very fascinating, isn't it? I, we are able yeah. to code and predict what's going to happen, simulate the stuff. We actually can build that up based on statistical analysis, mathematical analysis, coding, computing, all of that, all the facilities that we've got already and come up with a model for predicting some behavior or or understanding pathways understanding how these neurons work and how the like memory works and other sort of you know crazy things that we have and actually and we, exactly you mentioned it perfectly because you mentioned about like learning a model yeah. and that's fascinating because even in inside reinforcement learning there, there are like two branches one is model based and one uh model free mm -hmm. uh and, and uh even this uh these two branches are fascinating like this uh, thing that you mentioned is exactly the way how human learns. Also, we we somehow do not repeat something, some uh, act that we know it is stupid, it it is yeah. bad many yeah. times. Mm. Uh, we, we even sometimes even do not even, for example, without even trying of falling out of a cliff. We yeah. know that, like yeah. we can, we, shouldn't do that. Can, we should not do that, right? Yeah. Even if we are kid, right? Yeah, yeah. As a um, mathematician um, and uh, someone who is interested in understanding how maths is related to real life stuff or application in engineering, science, or whatever, I would like to ask these questions: that how you think your maths background has been helping you develop your ideas and um, you know, taking all these um, research positions and, you know, building up your career, um, how, how this has been helping you and why you think maths is important because I know you're fairly good at it and, you know, it's very uh, applied. Thanks, Thank you. Uh, I wish I was good. <laughs> I, <wish laughs> I, I know was. you are. I'm a very mathematician. Uh, it feels that Honestly, thinking about it, uh, I wouldn't call myself mathematician because also think think that because I've seen so many fascinated, like brilliant mathematicians. Like mm. I have a colleague here, like his name is Wolfgang, mm. and uh, we have a regular. We have also another NSF project uh, with with uh, the mathematics department, which involves Wolfgang. He's like brilliant in, in the insight in math and like the way how he thinks uh, is is totally different. I, I feel that I'm a fraud in front of 
these brilliant people. Mm, mm. Uh, I wish I had that inside, but uh, at least I could tell that uh, the skill that I learned partly uh, during my uh, training in, uh, in mathematics helped a lot to understand at least uh, the theoretical foundation of AI. Mm -hmm. uh, because at the end of the day, uh, uh, at least this uh, AI machine learning, which is a branch of computer science, you mm -hmm. could tell, um, it's very much uh, founded and uh, uh, the foundation of it is in a theory, it's in like mathematics. Mm -hmm. uh, like it's uh, not all branches of mathematics, but several branches. Like for example, linear algebra is a big part of it. Mm -hmm. uh, the optimization uh, is also a big part of it. Mm -hmm. uh, statistics actually is the main part of it. Uh, and uh, and uh, like even the causal inference that I mentioned that I mm. uh, got the chance to learn very recently is like has a like theoretical foundation which mm. are all mathematics mm. um, and like obviously it uh, it uh, like uh, at least knowing how to like read this theoretical foundation yeah. and think uh, like. Uh, in this theoretical foundation about the algorithms that we develop, the, mm -hmm. the kind of uh, new methods that uh, uh, we develop, I mean, by we, maybe my students and postdoc, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not doing that much. I wish uh, I, I, I could, I, I had time, but, uh, but basically this uh, theoretical foundation, understanding it was super helpful. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and, that that's why, um, at least that's uh, that's what I can say. How it helped me, mm. um, but also um, computer science has uh, some uh, other aspect. Like, for example, when it comes to coding, coding also uh, it is very much connected to also a couple of branches in mathematics like mm. for example discrete mathematics mm. is very much related to software yeah. uh, like even category theory uh, which is a, like the heavy part of mathematics and it's so abstract mm. um, it's very much related to programming languages mm. uh, and, and basically these two disciplines computer science and mm. mathematics you cannot separate them it's, no. it's so intervened uh, yeah. with each other it's it's it looks like a save like i would represent it like this even like they have so much commonalities than yeah. than differences yeah. um, i mean you still these days it's so easy to uh, to learn how to code even how to you know do ai yeah. without yeah. even uh, like understanding the mathematics mm. because there are tools frameworks everything available and that's so fascinating and that's that's brilliant because um people can build something that may change our society our world mm. Mm. but uh like it is easy to do it uh without mathematics but in order to do something new to uh to to create something incredible you definitely need to have some ground in theory to have some grounding in mathematics to advance the state of the art a little bit to push it the frontier of, of like ai you definitely need some insight in mathematics yeah. i mean again i wish i had uh, the ability to do uh, better in mathematics mm. so I could do better as a result in AI yeah. uh, but at least with limited knowledge that I got uh, yeah. I know uh, it's not limited <laughs> <laughs> are you humble about that uh, for those who don't know even doing a, a bachelor degree in applied maths you can still get a lot of information about different sorts of uh, different branches of mathematics different subjects that you can get to know the basics like logics and discrete maths statistics 
analysis, exactly. uh, like theoretical stuff, the backbone, literally backbone of mathematics. And that can give you um, a great insight. Um, you might not like, you might not use even the all the parts of it, but the fact that you are able to think mathematically and um, you know at least understand it, at least when you hear the word, then you know what it is. I think that's a valuable thing. Valuable. Yeah, thing. exactly. And, and and even like the the, the concept or the like uh, branch of mathematics, you are familiar. You are like much more knowledgeable than me. Like for example, functional analysis. If functional you remember, functional analysis. Yeah, yeah. It is like uh, I mean, like now I understand like what functional analysis and how useful it is. It is. I remember like you remember we had a like fantastic teacher Shotman. Yeah. I yeah. still remember him like the style that he had yeah. uh, like teaching functional analysis. I mean I couldn't see at the time how uh, brilliant he is and how passionate he is yeah. like, to like yeah. <laughs> about yeah. this branch of mathematics. Yeah. At the time it was so tough for me to understand mm -hmm. uh, things at least i could see a little bit it is good yeah. <laughs> but it was like beyond my capability but yeah. now i clearly see that how useful it is and like i could see the connection with some like theoretical uh machine learning uh, yeah. uh and how like uh how it could help to at least the way how you think about this you know these spaces mm. that you know it might not have some physical realization mm. uh, like Banacher space like and also mapping between these spaces yeah. and how you could you know build some theory in AI mm. Mm. <laughs> using this uh, foundation is so fascinating I mean mm. this connection between these two fields yeah it, it's so tight and uh, mm. Mm. To be That's honest, it was power, yeah. it's quite difficult for me at that time um, to understand that deeply because I found it really difficult. Uh, but um, and 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 sometimes I think uh, I wish they sort of the way they presented the work was a little bit a kind of more practical, like because they just constantly talk about theory, 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 and um, yeah. uh, so so it makes it a little bit difficult and challenging to understand. But at the same time, if we could kind of do the things or teach us stuff in a quite a practical way that hey this is the exactly that's the application of it and you can see it and and even do some work um i think that could have helped a lot um that's right that's right but but i i like looking at what you did i i remember like uh your PhD and like uh, your master all was, you know, more theoretical and like more fascinating. And yeah. I'm sure that like the level that you understood functional as well, this kind of, you know, topics uh, are deeper than me. I wish I, I could, you know, develop. Yeah. I remember some students in class, mm. I could easily see that they, they like, they, uh, they, they are deeper uh, mm. in the way how they understand yeah. uh, this fascinating math. Uh, yeah. yeah, and it's a, it's a great news for, for everyone, I think, who thinks uh, that what I'm going to do with all this math stuff. Um, I think it's a great news for, um, for people in general that, um, yeah, there, there's actually so many things you can do with it. And, uh, you know, it's very practical. Yeah, exactly. This connection, this connection is so important and you made it perfectly. I personally, to, like from my perspective, I had to make this connection myself. Mm. And, and uh, it was tough. It takes yeah. a lot of time. It takes yeah. so many years. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and it took me several years until I could go back and look at the theory and the, like this some insight in mathematics mm. to appreciate it mm. because it took time until like I could connect that's you know? true that's no, true. it is not easy no, uh, very, it is one of the uh, you know uh, one of the responsibilities uh, of teachers right mm -hmm. to connect these uh, mm -hmm. you know branches I mean like uh, you can connect you know mathematics with some engineering with some you know other like discipline even like in computational uh 
neuroscience or even theoretical neuroscience or like uh, uh, even in psychology. Uh, yeah. Like there are also branches heavily involved in math, right? Yeah. Yeah. And like, uh, and math is a uh, universal language, and yeah. and even. We know that like these great uh, physicists mm. like Einstein yeah. and then yeah. uh, like, they were mathematicians. Things, like, like, exactly. And like they were mathematicians, right? Yeah. Uh, great mathematicians. They great could you know, they uh, do this fantastic build yeah. these fantastic mm. uh, theories in physics which are all uh, you know formulated in math, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. there is nothing and and that's why I love it because it it has a lot of there are a lot of other disciplines which rooted in, uh, yeah. in mathematics and they could not advance their field without math, right? Yeah, yeah, I do that. yeah, yeah. Actually, um, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, when I started my postdoc, I, I I did some work on quite interdisciplinary like neuroscience and maths. And we were part of the a research institution at UC Sydney University. It's called Charles Peking Center. But uh, we were the only group who actually did um, quite interdisciplinary project and worked on that, and you know, used mathematical and computing skills for understanding biological systems. Uh, but that postdoc, um, uh, which was very challenging for me, actually gave me an idea about how education is supposed to be. Because I wish, it exactly what you said, I wish I could see these things when I was doing my bachelor's degree, when I was doing my master's exactly. degree, when I was doing my PhD. You know, yeah. it, I found that why we didn't have this stuff earlier. Because yeah, exactly. Like I remember, like you told me about what you did in your PhD. It is so fascinating. It yeah. is so like the, the, the stuff that you work on. Yeah. I mean, yeah. like you you could you could see it is a fantastic application, right? Yeah, exactly. And, and once you connect it, you love it. You know, you love you, it. You, exactly. the kind of because goal that you get out of it is like you cannot compare it with that's anything true. else. That's true. That's true. And I, and I sort of. Uh, I think even for my my company, Vantupai, that is mainly for, for kids. But I just wanted to apply exactly the same teaching method. That it should be, it should be interdisciplinary. Everything should be connected. We shouldn't kind of, you know, we, we should actually get something that is, that is related to that. That's how we can see things because it adds value to it. You have meaning. Um, you answer this question, why I should learn this? Because constantly when it's come to max. People will start asking, why I should I learn this stuff? Yeah. Exactly. Anyway, and I think that most, most of the, um, I wouldn't maybe, not everybody in the uh, mathematical kind of education space is like that. Some are quite knowledgeable. But I think in general, that can be to do with teachers because they don't know how to even connect with this stuff because that requires a lot of thinking, uh, to be honest. Yes. And yeah. you should, you know, you should, you should get educate. You should get training for it, and you should spend a lot of time understanding how this is connected to that. So um, I don't blame the education system, but I think there is a need, a huge need for it. That you know, things should be. Positioned. Yeah, but but I, I mean, like uh, I agree, and and I believe, I strongly believe, like the kind of work, uh, like. The, like for example, your company and the mission that you have is is so incredible and could change the life of so many kids, right? <laughs> because yeah. especially at this age, it is important to answer this question that you pose: Why I have to learn this? Mm. Right? Even a simple concept. Yeah. Right? Uh, it is so important. I mean, like, uh, I started to uh, to do this intentionally in the classes that I teach. Here I teach three courses, uh, I mean, one course per semester. For example, this course, this semester I'm teaching computer architecture, like uh, next semester I'm teaching machine learning systems uh, and sometimes uh, artificial intelligence. Whenever I am teaching a new concept, I try to emphasize and explain why uh, you need to learn this. Mm. Not only why they need to learn computer architecture, for example, 
but a concept, a core concept in com computer architecture. Why? Uh, I'm spending probably half time of each lecture, mm. half I only explain like uh, why, and then I start explain what. I remember the first uh, statistic course that we had, I mean, the teacher was, I mean, he was good in the statistic, but mm. he was not good at all in teaching it. Yeah, yeah. I remember like just writing on, uh, on the board. Blackboard, some like formula. Okay, what you're yeah. talking about? Like, what? Why? Why? First of all, is why should I learn this? Yeah. Like, yeah. what it is? <laughs> yeah. And like, they, like they they explain what it is, but like in a way that okay, like I could read it yeah. from book, but that's like it. explain something <laughs> more than that. <laughs> yeah. <That's laughs> you know. Yeah. And so these these are very important, especially like at the time when we have to learn, when we have the capacity when we have the uh, you know, plasticity to learn new concepts, like that's a big responsibility sure. of uh, teachers, of teachers. Uh, and, and, and that's, teachers. that's important that that could change life. Yeah, that's Thank true. I, I remember that, you know, probably most of our lectures during bachelor degree were the same, but uh, the statistical part was um, the worst because I literally got nothing out of it. The lecture was literally writing things on the board, just literally presenting. Exactly, and, and this, is, this is the most fundamental course needed in AI. That's the true. most fundamental. Yeah. I mean, I was mad at the time when I faced something that, oh my God, like I had I should have known about this, no, like no, already. No, why true. I like why, why not? I did not, why? and then thinking, okay, like it was in the content, but like I simply ignore it because, like, why? Yeah. Why yeah. should I learn it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I exactly uh, feel and uh, and understand what you're talking about. When you like, it it is not only about like learning it, like looking at the formula doing something with it it's about developing some insight based on it yeah, you know this exactly insight right. is is something where it allows you to you know connect things and like make something totally new yeah but with maybe even remembering formula you may not be able to do anything new right That's without true. these insights no, right no. and like these are tough i mean these That's are really like tough. i see great teachers where they focus on these insight and I could see easily how good it is for students yeah that's true. and I, I all the time uh, think about it and mm. what are the miss opportunities what are the opportunities that we miss because mm. of like bad teachers unfortunately uh, teacher. exactly yeah it is very important the role uh, the mission that you have right that's why i love it it's it's so fascinating Thank because because it's it's different kind of teaching and yeah. learning experience yeah. is totally different and, yeah. and it's it's very good it's mm. it's it develops it leads to to some brilliant thing in the future it's it has some it, it will make impact even through generations. Yeah. I, mean, oh, I hope so. I hope so. Simple as yeah. that. Is there anything that's been bothering you that you could call it pain points that, you know, during all this journey that you would like to share or talk about it? Yeah, I mean, like, it's, uh, life has been tough, right? Uh, especially moving, like, from country to country. Mm -hmm. uh, at some point when I was in the US, I, I mean, I couldn't even uh, see my family. I mean, travel back to, yeah. uh, travel to like outside the US because yeah. of travel ban. Yeah, totally um, so these, these experiences was, you know, tough. I've uh, been tough and, yeah. and it's, it's not easy, but uh, I mean, like it's part of the life and, and I, I still, uh, think about these uh, positively as, mm -hmm. as a kind of experience that put us in an uncomfortable kind of uh, zone, yeah. but it is an opportunity to learn from this kind of maybe difficult situation yeah. because 
yeah, maybe like we do not get the chance to go outside the U.S. see family, mm. but we could maybe at least you know uh, contribute a little bit in different way, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, <laughs> Focusing yeah. on on like research, doing yeah. better teaching, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. learning uh, something new, yeah. uh, and and like at least I I try to always think about this uh positively um and, and uh yeah. but but it is it is tough that uh, the journey uh, uh i mean any researcher you, for you yourself you, yeah. i'm sure you are also experiencing totally it because like the journey of doing research uh even doing uh you know phd it's 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 not easy it's it's mm. it involves a lot of you know sacrifice a lot of you know time commitment mm. a lot of you know skipping maybe <laughs> a sleeping yeah, no, <laughs> uh, no. uh, all of these still it's it's not easy <laughs> I, I mean but but like i like i i love it because i uh i i do see myself <laughs> that i'm lucky that I got a chance to work with some brilliant people. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, which is and, very yeah. great. Yeah. I think you are a true example of being a very resilient person uh, with quite a, a powerful growth mindset. Uh, and I do value people like you a lot because I know how tough it is um, to actually not being able to see your family because of a stupid travel ban for years and years. And losing your old social security uh, because of you know this drive and these ambitions and and all of that, all the um, fascinating work that you've been doing and all this tough journey you've been through so far. So I think um, yeah, you're a true example for a lot of people who who would think, oh, I got stuck mm -hmm. in a hard situation, I don't know how to get out of it, or you know, being negative about life, or you know. Um, dealing with hard situation, I think um, there's a hope for it, and you're an example that you showed actually is possible right. to achieve a lot and start from. Right. Scratch. No, no, I, you achieve a lot. I, I did not. I mean, like I, um, I achieved something ordinary, and I'm happy with mm. it. Uh, um, and yeah, uh, like always, like also good friends like you to look up to. Uh, like uh, oh, thank you. also like uh, you know seeing that uh, it is possible to yeah. maybe do something a little bit positive yeah. Uh, yeah these are the things that i uh i try to you know pay attention and I learn know. from i know i know uh, i know it's hard but you made it and i think it's very valuable i personally appreciate it a lot <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ige, so um, we about the, so that's probably um, kind of a question um, for you, um, but I think uh, that's going to be quite um, useful for uh, very young uh, students or kids. Um, your advice to your 14 years old self, uh, if you go back in time, what would it, what would you change? Or kind of systematic way, I would say. Um, if there is anything that you would love to, because it seems to be no, there is, there is, mm -hmm. uh, there, there is. I mean, like about like decision of going through this journey. Mm -hmm. uh, I would do it again and again. I have no doubt that mm -hmm. was the journey that I what have to make like like in all versions. That mm -hmm. even if I go back many many times, I would do it right mm, yeah. um, but there are a few things that obviously uh, uh, I if I <laughs> would have got the chance to go back I definitely at least start from something which is related to this discussion I would definitely uh, pay more attention to some uh, topics some uh, things that I know it uh, is useful, like a statistic, mm. uh, maybe even some, uh, you know, uh, I, I, I mean, these days I, uh, 
these days I also listen to several podcasts from fantastic physicists uh, mm. like Sean Carroll, for mm. example. And uh, I mean, I, I still don't have any good knowledge in, from physics and I was bad at it. I remember in school. Uh, uh, I mean, that was, uh, I couldn't, I mean, like my reasoning was that Mm. Like mathematics is something generalized, like could go beyond uh, physics. Uh, mm. Physics is just one branch, but but actually, like there are like some theoretical aspect in physics which could have helped uh, me or someone like me to you know to build some foundation uh, at that age. Uh, mm. You know, this this building some insights again. I wish I had the chance to build it uh, with a lot of them like earlier in life because mm. it's a lot easier uh, back then to learn this yeah. uh, foundation, to build this insight, which mm. I'm not saying that it is not possible. It's very tough very at hard. this age to build it. Mm. It's still possible. <laughs> yeah. And that's why I, I take that as a human, we may not have even used 10% of our brain, yeah. uh, but it's tough, I mean, uh, to, to learn some even basic concept which a kid could maybe learn in an hour. Uh, I may need to spend a lot of hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I do get that. That's, that's one thing. Another thing I, uh, which I think it is important, uh, like, Pay more attention to physical activities, even though, mm. like, I, I mean, pre, uh, pre uh, university, uh, I've been doing wrestling, soccer a lot. I mm. remember uh, I was active, but I could have been active even at the time more. Uh, mm. And especially during university time, mm. I should have been active, but mm. I was not, unfortunately. Mm. Uh, I mean, that was a stupid decision that I made, mm. um, but uh, but now I see how important it is and yeah. how good it is for you know your for performance. learning performance in your work, yeah. and that's incredible. Yeah. And that's that's something which I mean <laughs> I wish I had time. I mean these days today, for example, I went to one session boxing, uh, mixed martial art, and one session yoga. Wow. Uh, hot yoga, like, uh, it's so lovely. I, I will, like, I cannot wait until next day go do something yoga. crazy. Okay. <laughs> and it, it's, uh, it's yeah. fantastic. Mm. I mean, like, what I wish I could, I would have started a lot earlier. Yeah, right? yeah. Uh, yeah, I that. yeah. So oh, this is these two uh, <laughs> yeah. but also maybe some decision in my life i i and i i wish i would have thought about them like a lot better but uh unfortunately i've been uh you know putting my uh focus on you know i was not seeing correctly i i didn't have the right work model mm -hmm. unfortunately mm -hmm. I, I needed to learn the lesson and 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 like la last year especially for me was uh, was important to change even my worldview. Wow, really? <laughs> you know, it's it's. Uh, I mean, and and the key thing is is simply knowing yourself, uh, myself. Uh, uh, I mean, after, <laughs> you know, so many years, yeah. finally, I, I feel I, I did a little bit of it only last year. Wow. And, yeah. and actually <laughs> not do anything before then. And this is so stupid. Uh, but uh, I mean, these three things. Uh, yeah, we get what you mean. It could be quite yeah. tough. But, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, again, I, I only could say maybe at least I could say that never is late, but sure. I know that, uh, you know, uh, life could have been a lot better, a lot better if I would have done them like a lot earlier. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, again, uh, no. Yeah. I mean, it's not late. <laughs> no, no, of course not. It's never late. It's never late. <laughs> yeah.
yeah. <laughs> All right. So I would say the last question for you would be your um, checking ritual. Something you practice every day since that you're quite in, keen in doing exercise and yoga, but is there anything else you would like to do it daily on a daily basis and you got a lot of benefit out of it for either yeah. personal life? Please. Yeah, it's like meditation is is the only thing I could say. I mean, like every day I I've, I wake up, I mean, like it takes at least one and a half hour for me to to start, be able to start like the day and start working. Mm. And, I thought I I'm mean, the only one with it. And now I hear that I saw you the same as well. It literally takes me. Yeah, I mean, like I, I tried a couple of times to like, jump and sit on desk and work and yeah. I, I realized that i cannot work and i yeah. did not do anything on, like until the end of the day so wow. it was totally a waste of time yeah. so every day when i wake up i mean mm. it at least one and a half hour two hours mm. meditation a little bit of workout and you know thinking um yeah. you know like uh, listening few things uh uh you know, uh, it's mainly thinking and, and listening at the same time and maybe a little bit of music sometimes, mm. uh, but but it's mainly meditation uh, and right. getting ready for the day. That's, 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 yeah. um, that's the <laughs> thing that uh, it's part of my daily routine. routine. Yeah. yeah, and it's a great one. Okay, so it was a fantastic talk. I really enjoyed that. And I'm so Thanks. glad uh, to see how far you've been Peru. And, uh, Thanks. Thanks. You it, and it was not far. You, it, it's, no, it's, it's great. It's a, lot, it's great. a lot less than what you a, guys did. But... <laughs> it's a quite adventurous journey you've had. And uh, I'm sure you'll see um, quite you know, more, more of it and more fascinating news Thanks. and the stuff that is waiting for you. Um, but... Um, Oh, you also suggested that, um, you know, you want to kind of run a, um, or have a series of um, episodes uh, by the AI. Yeah, I would love to. Yeah, I, I, I would love, love to. Well. Yeah. From so, time um, to time, we, we go over some, you know, branches yeah. of mathematics. We at least brainstorm, we yeah. discuss. Yeah. I would love to do it because be uh, at least, you know, uh, for, for the audience of uh, your mm. fantastic podcast, yeah uh might be useful and i would love you to do it in discussion with you and maybe some colleagues of mine yeah. maybe uh like even uh some uh, like, we, like uh postdoc that started in my group sonam uh, she is also fantastic in uh, mathematics actually her background is uh very much similar to you is control mm. systems mm. and uh maybe i uh, or you invite her to, <laughs> to sure. join no, I would love to. <laughs> and, and, uh, i'm sure he she has like deeper insight in mathematics especially control theory and uh, dynamical systems and uh, yeah. this is fascinating Thank you for listening to this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I will have a series of episodes with Puyan and his colleagues um, about applied maths, um, in particular artificial intelligence. And um, I will invite you to keep listening to it because it's getting really interesting. Don't forget to subscribe on platforms and continue supporting us.